Hello, and welcome to another episode of Zoomies Abroad. Hi, I'm Miley. And I'm Brian. In case you are not familiar with us. If this is your first video that you're watching of us, yeah. good on you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we are here today to give another update. It's been a long time. Yes, we've tried to do this update. Six month mark, eight month mark, yeah. 10 month mark. Now we are... One year next month. Yep, been yep. here almost a year. Mm -hmm. So welcome to our year update of Ooh. living in New Zealand. One year! What? We made it a year! Um, yeah, they, didn't, we, they didn't kick us out. Yay. Yeah, We've been doing other videos and we're just not so great at no. keeping up with videos. But, no. you know, anyways, hey, here's a year. <laughs> <laughs> this is our year in review. So, first piece of news. Would you like to tell our lovely viewers... Bring it on down. Yes. I feel like a game show host. Do we really want to do the first one? What's behind door number one? The first one is such a big one. Do we want to let them know that up front here? All right, we'll end on the first one. Oh, hi, Zobar. You want to be a part of the video now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll ease into door number two. Door number two. Work. What's the it's work the exciting update? exciting world of work. So, Miley, why don't you give your update? I am still at the same job doing nursing at no. the Needham Hospital. It's not much of an update. And uh, it's going really well. I got really lucky with finding a great team. Um, been able to do fill in for a couple different roles, so get some variety. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy there. So for me, work updates not very exciting. <laughs> oh, so bear. She's under the table Our dog here. just knocked her head. It's like she knew we were recording our, our one-year update. Yeah. She's like, ooh, include ah, me. Let me make noise. <laughs> let me go and chew on the blanket in the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, well, you did just do, she had to fill in for a manager who was out of town. So she did that for six weeks. And she did an amazing job, according from what I've heard, <laughs> which is awesome. I just tell him that. <laughs> It was, it was it was stressful at times though, so I yeah. feel for you. Anyways, the uh, the short story because we're trying not to ramble is trying. I do not want to go into management. <laughs> and now to you, Bob. All right. So for me, for work, my contract, which I believe we've talked about in other ones, was going to mm -hmm. end at the end of this month, and I had been trying to find a job uh, unsuccessfully. And yeah, it was going to be a huge pay cut, which I kind of knew that was going to be it happened. So it was just kind of is what it was. But it was just hard to find anything, especially in Dunedin uh, for me, for the for the kind of the software industry, not coding. If I was a coder, I would have found a job really mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed working in the technology sector and I just couldn't find anything down here. But I ended up last month, I think it was last month found out from my management team that their higher-ups heard that my contract was ending and I was going to be leaving and they kind of got upset and they made it so that I can stay. So Brian, in case you don't know, is working for a U.S. company. Yes. And it's not so simple as just moving to a new country while keeping your job in the U.S. We're yeah. not going to get into that now, but just yeah. an FYI, if you're thinking of moving here and keeping your job in the U.S., reach out to us, send us a... A message on Instagram. Yeah, or comment down below. And, or comment down below. We'll and if we get enough you. comments, maybe we'll do a video yeah. about it. So. Yeah, so I'm keeping my job. That's yeah. a moral of that story. <coughs> Moving on. Moving on. Door number three. Friends. No, you. he's not so good at the math. So. Settled. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers are hard. <laughs> Numbers over the number two, two. are hard. One, two, eight. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Anyways, we want to talk about, I think our last update, I don't know, was it three months, six months? Honestly, can't remember. Yeah, we can were remember. very much in the getting settled, starting to feel settled, things starting to feel normal, but still struggling a mm -hmm. bit. I can honestly say a year in, we're totally settled. Life is normal. We have our favorite spots. We have close friends. We have... Life is routine. Our favorite walks, everything's a routine. We don't have to think about, you know, shopping, brands, yeah. any of that. So life is really, really good. 
Um, and we really love it here. We love Dunedin. We still love Dunedin. Plan on staying here. Mm -hmm. So hang in there. Anybody going through the process. Um, and I'd say around the nine month mark. Yeah. We started feeling that way. It really started to hit. But yeah. I would say even even the past few months, our dog always knows <laughs> when we're recording a video. So just ignore the squeaks. Um, but there is a difference between even nine months and a year. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like almost nine months, it got to the point where it's so routine that I was starting to get bored. I mean, like, oh, God, I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, because the, the kind of the excitement of the newness. Yeah, drops off. Drops off then. But I think at a year, the comfort, like the comfort of the routine, the routine really kicks in. So it's been a really interesting journey. Yeah. Now we can go to door number four. Door number five. <laughs> Uh, door number four, friends. Yeah, we just wanted to touch on making friends here because we've had a number of people that have moved abroad that have either had a hard time making friends or they're thinking of moving and they're really worried about making friends as adults. So we have made some really great friends here. Yep. And honestly, we almost have too many friends. Like, <laughs> we can't see everybody. Um and Brian describes it best, so why don't you describe it, honey? Yeah, you really just got to go back to your kindergarten years. You know when you're on the playground and you see somebody and you're like, you're my new friend. That's pretty much what you yeah, got to do. like, just, you seem cool. Yeah. We should grab a drink sometime. Yeah, that's and, the more adult way of doing and, it. And uh, <laughs> sometimes you got to say it a few times. Yeah, but just strike up a conversation. Talk to people. Yeah. And then just ask them flat out, hey, you want to hang out sometime? Now, mind you, I know this is a little bit harder for women because it, sometimes if you say that to a guy, they might take it the wrong way. Although I've made a number of male friends at work and usually they're partnered up. Um, but it's really easy. I just am like, we should get drinks sometime. And then if you kind of give people a date, like, hey, we're going to be here getting drinks mm -hmm. if you want to join us, that is works better than the vague, hey, let's hang out sometime. Yeah. So Brian and I have also just started inviting people out for pizza. When pizza we night. Go. And we'll just send out a number of texts and whoever shows up, cool. Not, but... not to downplay it, like... <laughs> <laughs> like, if our friends are watching this and we invite you to pizza, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, like, oh. the third on the list. No, 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 like... no, no. <laughs> it's, like, it's like our favorite people. But sometimes I'll invite some, some favorite people close people and it's a new person so it's like less intimidating anyways it doesn't matter there's a whole <laughs> there's a whole theory to this <laughs> if friends of ours who are watching this don't overthink it it's it's really yeah. not this planned yeah. out <laughs> um but anyways i've made we've met friends on instagram yep. where we would just start commenting on each other's post and then eventually we're like oh we should meet up and some of our good friends are from instagram yeah. really and then um our slack channel a lot of our good friends are from that. So, you know, social media can be a freaking nightmare, but you can also use it to your advantage. Yep. And also just people that you meet. Yeah. Just in different wherever. places. Yeah. So if you it, just feel a connection, yeah. just ask them. In fact, I think, um, I don't think I've ever had this many friends in mm. one place right. in my adult life. It's because you haven't stayed in one place for a while. Well, I mean, that's part of it, but we've only been here a year. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We've made a lot of friends. We've made friends. a lot of friends. So Because we use the kindergarten method. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't give them a choice. That helps, too. The kindergarten method might sound weird out of you, context. You will be my friend. <laughs> okay, anyways, moving on from all that. Uh, number five. <laughs> Scred? Scred? I'm not sure. More... More part of community. <laughs> down, down. Is that an arrow for pointing That's down? Down stressed. Is that de stressed? <laughs> Miley is going to read the next one. <laughs> My handwriting is really good. Decrease stress, and we feel more <laughs> part of a community. You're clearly not in the medical profession. Clearly. <laughs> uh, decrease stress. Yeah. Feeling like we're a part of the community, yes. Where'd you want to go with that? I wasn't sure. <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, sorry, I got the giggles. 
Anyways. Number six. To go, <laughs> <laughs> to go along with feeling settled um, and having friends is life in general is way less stressful than in the U.S. And a year into it, even more so because yeah. we don't have the stress of moving and settling in. We're settled. Work-life balance is great. Uh, what's cool about Dunedin is it's small enough. You really feel like you are part of the community. Like you actually care about cycleways and the wildlife and the homeless person on the street corner. And, you know, if a restaurant or a business is doing okay, because you probably know the owner. So yeah. it's really, really cool. I think that's one of the really special things about Dunedin is that there is a strong sense of community and people really pull together for each other. Yeah. So I really like that. I don't think I've had that really. So it's a very, I don't know if it's a very Kiwi thing or a Dunedin thing, or we just found the place for us. Yeah. But it's a really great feeling. And I think we also, for us, maybe this happens and happened in other places we live, but this place in particular, we feel like we're part of the community. So I think we almost even care more because we feel yeah. more connected to it. Yeah. So yeah. So that's what that was. Yeah. Good job. Thanks for pointing out how bad my handwriting yeah. is, honey. That's what I'm here for. That's what husband's Let's see for. if you can read number six and six A. Wather. <laughs> what Dunedin. I can read Dunedin. <laughs> I'm assuming you're saying weather Dunedin. Weather in yes, Dunedin? Weather in Dunedin. Weather Dunedin is greater than. It's weather greater, greater than Auckland. <laughs> we have more weather here than Auckland. Yes, it is, uh, it is wintertime now uh, because we're in the southern hemisphere. And it has been, it's been quite cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, ice on the roads this morning. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yes to all the people who say Dunedin is cold. It is cold. That's not the real issue, though. No, because we lived in Vermont. Which is colder. Yes. The real issue here. The windows. The windows <laughs> and the heating. And the insulation. It's like the people that built these homes thought, oh, we're in New Zealand. It's an island. It's always tropical. And like never actually came to Dunedin in the winter. I do wonder why. And feel free to comment down below. Yeah, like, please, because I'm really curious, like, why did it end Why? up this way? It seems strange. Because I, I believe, and also comment down below if you actually know when double pane, pane windows were created. I feel like it's been a, it was a long time ago when double pane windows were created. And the fact that most of the houses here don't have them, I find it interesting. Um, there, yeah. Yeah, there's very little central heating. So we have like this little measly heat pump that makes our living room kind of warm. <laughs> And then we have a lot of space heaters. And a lot of electric blankets. And we have three electric blankets. We do cuddle more now, which is nice. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, and I'm not exaggerating, it will be colder inside than outside. Yeah, so overnight the house cools down. Yeah. And then when we go outside in the morning and it's warmed up outside, it's warmer outside. And I'm then. like, oh, <laughs> maybe I'll hang out outside today. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but, but all in all, it's not, it's not horrible. I mean, it's it's something that you laugh about when you live down here yeah. and you kind of accept, but a part of you is like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Especially coming from the U.S. where central heating and AC was pretty standard. Insulated and, floors, double yeah. pane windows. Yeah. Yeah. But so, anyways. It's what it is. <laughs> it's what it is. And that brings us to, what are these quickies? Insulation. Oh, this was for the, the weather. And this is for... Door number seven, New Zealand quirks. Oh. Which we kind of just led into. Right. So my first two are actually insulation and central heating. Oh, yeah. And then em emission standards. Yeah. We might have touched on this on previous one. We have reached kind of the end of our slotted time for this video, but I'm just going to plug yeah. on this a little bit. I lived in California for a long time, and there's pretty, uh, the emission standards there are pretty strong for vehicles. And there's nothing here. I mean, I guess they do have some kind of standards, but there are a lot of cars that either have removed their exhaust altogether or, you know, if they still have it on there, it just doesn't really do anything. And it's just, oh, it's just so bad. Yeah. Just the, and then also on top of that, we live in St. Kilda and it's 
very flat and there's like a berm around it so uh, all along the ocean so when it's smoky and not really windy or sorry when all the chimneys are going because it's cold and it's not windy it just kind of settles here and you just walk right outside just inhaling it you come inside your clothes yeah, smell like it i mean it's like thick you can sometimes see it yeah just hovering so there's there's weird things like that where you think... It doesn't make sense here. It doesn't make sense for New Zealand. Especially your perception of New Zealand from the U.S. You yeah. see it as this pristine nature. Super everything's green. green. And, and, and in many, many ways, New Zealand's very far ahead of the U.S. But emissions and like burning coal for, in your yeah. fireplace, stuff like that. I kind of go, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's just interesting. Yeah. And then our my last item on New Zealand quirks is places just close early. And sometimes they just change their hours and like you have no idea. So they'll just close for the day or they'll close a few hours early. So like um, <laughs> it's just been a bit of a struggle coming from the U.S. where places are open until 10 o'clock at night and they're open every day and their hours never change. Yeah. I think we talked about this early on in our earlier videos. Yeah. And it, it's true. In some degree, there's that part of you that's like, oh, I really wanted to go, go there and get that thing. But then there's the other part of it that's like, I want these people to have a life. Like, yeah. I go home. I don't, it's not that important that I get my burger or whatever. Yeah. No. And what it does is it does force you to just chill out. Yeah. Like we're, we're way more go with the flow now of like, okay, well that took forever to ship yeah. or, oh, they're closed. Yeah. For without any warning or. Yeah. Or whatever. And coming from hospitality, having worked in hospitality for a long time, I think it's awesome because there's so many times I worked, you know, at a restaurant and it was like, I don't know, six, seven o'clock and there's just nobody coming in and you have to stay there till 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and you're not getting paid or making any money really. And so, yeah, there's very much a, a Kiwi sort of lifestyle vibe of you just go with it. And a lot of times we'll just be like, she'll be right. Yep. <laughs> just gotta let it go. It's fine. Yeah. Whatever. Can't worry about it. Can't be bothered. It's not worth it. Uh, and Ooh, that, one last thing. That translates into less stress. Yes. On that note, driving in Dunedin. Very small city. There is rush hour, but it is more like rush <laughs> rush minute, if you will. Yeah. When she started managing, she had to start work a little bit later and got off a little bit later. And there were some days I was driving her. And before when I drove her, there was like no traffic. But now with the new hours she was working, that was just traffic all the way there and traffic all the way back. And I started getting stressed. And I started being like that American driver who's like, oh, I got to change lanes to get a little bit further ahead. And, oh, this car's going so slow. And, going so slow. And, uh, <laughs> and I had an incident where that was happening. And I decided oh, I'm going to take this back road to kind of get around it. And I got around the back way. And then the person that I had been hit behind past me at the stoplight in front of me that I got stopped at and I was like this is just this is ridiculous yeah <laughs> like, yeah like we didn't move to New Zealand to be aggressive angry no, driver no. and I was like okay and I told my I was like if I start acting like that tell me to stop yeah and I don't want to be that and way. then I had to stop being like I'll go around yeah yeah <laughs> And so, this person. so now I just get behind somebody and just go because it doesn't make a difference. It, it it might save you thirty seconds to a minute. Yeah, and yeah. chances are it actually cost you more time. Yeah, so yeah, so we're you know we're we're learning. I guess we're still adapting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been a great year. We are so happy to be here. Yeah. We'll keep doing videos of random <laughs> things, whatever spikes my interest. Yeah, um, piques your interest. Yeah, <laughs> spikes. Sure, that's a form of a peak. It's a... Anyways, thanks all for watching <laughs> another episode of Zoomies Abroad. Hopefully yeah. this was entertaining and you got something out of it. I was entertained, so that's <laughs> all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Hey, everybody. I got Zobear here. I, and, and... I actually don't know if you can see her, but... Yes, she wanted to be part of the video. Yes. To share our exciting news. Yep, that we forgot to share at the beginning. That my husband forgot to share in the beginning because he wanted to wait and build the suspense. And we now we've really built the suspense <laughs> so much. They're going to watch the video and be like, wait, what was the number one thing? What was it? <laughs> Door number one. What's behind it? So go ahead. We found out yesterday that we 
got our New Zealand residency. That's right. You guys are stuck with us. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, we got lucky because the time frame that we ended up coming to New Zealand, they ended up putting through this fast track thing for residency for a certain for certain jobs or certain mm -hmm. industries. So normally you would not get it this fast. No. We just got lucky. Um, we're really excited because we do want to stay here. Yeah. We do want to buy a house once we save up enough money. Whenever that'll be. Yeah. Uh, and then in five years we can be citizens and yes so yeah that was that was a very exciting day yep so that's it now you know yeah it's probably anticlimactic you probably thought we won like i mean we kind of did win the lottery the lottery and we kind of won it yeah yeah um but if they don't if they're not happy that we won that then and you might girl that wouldn't be and so zobear just had to share the news as well yeah she's so excited <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's all. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. This one. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Hopefully, it recorded. God, I hope so. <laughs> I love where I couldn't stop laughing. I know. It's perfect. Yay, recorded. Okay, three, two, one. You start. <laughs> Why always make me start? <laughs> <laughs> I just spit on myself. Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh. Hi, everyone. Well, you need a good pause so it's easier to edit. And scene. Well, then you just said scene, so you let pause. Okay, I'm going to count three, two, one. We're going to have a pause, and then you go. But you got to go five, four. Okay. <laughs> Five. Wait, now I gotta reset my watch. Set a timer for 15 minutes? Jeez, this is my life. This is my life. Hey Siri. <laughs> she never listens. Awesome. The timer's called This Is My Life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Five. Four. And we're back! So. <clears throat> ah, somebody wanted to save our good news till the end and then forgot to share the good news the person that was sitting there oh. <laughs> so here's a little add-on yep. to our video bonus video Ooh, bonus, bonus video. track you want to share the good news for real this time zobar you want to share the good news and not just be a good news tease Exactly. Every time. Yes. What Zobear just told you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we we found out yesterday that we got herpes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to share that. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> uh, here's the girl. Hi, <laughs> girl. Let's try that again. And we're back. <laughs> so we found out yesterday. Or do you want to give five, <laughs> four, three, 